takes on Carlton from Via Bell Park in Melbourne. Their colours lowered last week. The Magpies are looking to bounce back after an eight-goal drubbing at the Western Oval, while the Blues' three-point loss to Essendon was their first under new coach Alex Jesselinko, who locked horns with Collingwood today for the first time in ten years. with their performance against Footscray last week. Into the side, a very disappointing player, I think, Craig Stasevic. Also, Matthew Ryan, a long spell in the seconds. Terry Keyes, a youngster who started at Collingwood at 16 years of age. And the two very good backmen in Morwood and Chris Isco. And I can't, can't help feeling the centre line holds the key to the game. Dacos must fire, I feel. It remains to be seen. They've met 199 times, and they last met in round eight. Collingwood 109, defeating Carlton by 29 points. And Mullane is heading down towards the full forward region as well for Collingwood. Looks like Phillips Don. also on interchange for Carlton. And as Kelly and McKenzie will match up. The beak at uh, full forward and Krasiska's picking him up. The 200th meeting of Collingwood and Carlton from VFL Park. Ideal conditions for the clash of the league heavyweights. And let's see how the battle is going to unfold. Alden will probably get the first free kick of the match from midfield. And is he paying the advantage? Well, he can't, of course, from there. So Tom Alden, Carlton, going from left to right. No real goal advantage. Kernahan at the back of the pack, couldn't drag it down. Monkhurst gets well tackled by that same player. Christian, good hand pass, Morwood back in the side today and they certainly missed him out at the Western Oval last week. Knocked away by Mill Hanna. A chance for the Blues. Robertson to Johnston. Game number 201 for him. Up towards half forward and a fine mark for Collingwood taken by Saunders. The transfers play to the outer side. Gavin Brown, the state representative this year for the Magpies. And I think will poll particularly well in the Brown though. Barwick over to Stasevich. Back into the side today, Alvin for from one end, one end of the ground to the other with a series of handballs, not one kick. And they should have kicked it instead of handballing far too many. Mullane on a lead. And Marks in front of Aitken. It's not easy, Peter, for a forward, uh, and you'd appreciate this when they, br they bring it down with a serious hand pass because a forward needs to just get that initial break and what you look for is a quick kick. Dead right, Don. Darren Mullane. Directly in front, 40 metres out. And has just missed it. Take us back to Monkhurst. Or Hurst, Monkhurst, I should say, towards half forward. This is Mullane to Hawk. That was good play, Darren Mullane. Hawk, oh, flatten. That'll be a free kick down the ground, or will it come back? Now, will he pay this? Really, it should be paid as he should come back to half forward, I would think. Well, actually, it's interesting, Peter, because uh, Daru did that exactly the same thing last week. He had uh, Danaher set up the other end of the ground and ran straight through him with the hip and shoulder. He's got Paul, Paul Hawke in his sights here. He just couldn't quite see whether he did lift the elbow at the critical time, but he wasn't penalised last week. Daru. Well, this is Craig Kelly from 20 metres, 45 degree angle. He should kick this. He kicks a goal, and the goal is he's missed. Dick Collingwood, if my memory serves me correctly, last week at the Western Oval. He's got plenty of distance with this kick. Coming around, and that's the first goal of the game again for Alexander. directed kick straight into the arms of Steve Kernahan who's lifted in the second quarter looks for Aitken Minton Connell goes up in the, a big pack of players some tunnel ball down there on the end of it is Dacos short pass Jamie Turner Murray Renstead Monkhurst left centre wing wobbly kick by the big fellow Kennedy offloaded got a chance for Kelly or oh, Hawk runs into a brick wall in the person of uh, McKenzie towards the other side of the ground. Beautiful tap on by Brown to try to get it back to Mullane. Sits for him around Tom Elvin. Centering kick marked by Barwick. Yes. Doug Barwick, as you can see in that shot. 
fair way from the top, but this fellow is an excellent kick. One, two, three, four, five. The Tivoli was still going, he'd get a job as a juggler. Let's see how he goes with the kick. He kicked them from this distance before. He's got the distance and the accuracy. It's a goal to Barwick. He is a very, very good kick to goal. Or a very good kick full stop, Doug Barwick. Probably one of the best kicks in the league. Consistently the best. He gets a lot of distance with his kick. And he is very, very accurate. Three goals last quarter, last week. I'm sorry, one goal. 20th possession coming up. It results in a goal. Collingwood's back in front. Probably Collingwood's best player to date, Paul Hawke. Picked up a lot of possessions last week. But it was a bad miss. Blocking for the first quarter. 5-12-42 further ahead than they are at the moment. They certainly had the better of the play in the first term. Herman racing for it. Gets beaten to it by Gavin Brown. And gets ridden into the ground. Holding the ball or in the back or play on. Probably the best decision. Hawke gets claimed by Herman. But there is going to be a free kick. And the recipient will be Brown. Around about the centre-half back position. A really good game from him so far today. Eight and five. His stats. He's also taken three marks. Delivers the ball to the centre wing position. That's James Manson dragging it down. And Bailey and Hawke having a little bit of a battle down there. Play in the meantime continues as the ball gets built up towards half forward. Mullane, he's been a strong player today. He's marked just about everything that's came his way. At the back is McKenzie. Kelly. One behind. What's he kicked now? 1 4, is it? In fact, he hasn't kicked a goal. Four points, Peter. Four points. Thank you, Don. Wayne Johnston on the bench came out just before the <coughs> quarter got underway to run around with the team. I don't know what the point of that exercise was. McKenzie kicks in. Knocked away by Monkhurst. DeRui has been fairly quiet today. Assistance from Robertson. Robertson's short pass in the direction of Mill Hanna out on the centre wing. Got plenty of space out there. Now Hannah looks for some movement across the half forward line and distance with the kick at the back is Kernahan a little bit of a nudge away from Christian now here's Meldrum who's always elusive close to goal shoots but he's put it out of bounds on the foot well poor play by, by Paul brilliant play earlier but what a poor kick on the run should have at least set it up to the goal square and they had a loose man there this is McEwen five points of difference Collingwood lead by the vital third quarter often uh, decides the winner of a game. This is Naley brought the ground. Well done by Christian. McGuan in after it, close to the boundary line. The umpire will bounce it. Scoring shots are 18 to 8 in favour of Collingwood. So I think that's pretty indicative of, of how well Collingwood has played in general play. They haven't put the goals on the board. They've missed an absolute sitters. There's uh, Dacos. Over to Renstead. Oh, smothered beautifully off the boot by DeRui. He goes in after it to try and get it again. Good play, Steve DeRui. Naley. Phillips is on the ground for Carlton. Take it away by Dacos, who played a very good second quarter. He's gone wide. And...